Hi there, this is Bravo 1 with Bravo Team Airsoft and I'm going to go over a quick view of my Mike Force kit. Now this is a, isn't a complete kit and I am still doing research on this as it's quite limited compared to a lot of other units. There's not a lot of documentaries about it, um, there's not a lot of forums or information. The, uh, the, the interest in this is still ongoing so there's some stuff I don't know or maybe I've got wrong so you know, I'm uh, always looking into this kind of stuff and all the different kits, everything's a work in progress. So, you know, if I do get anything wrong, as per as mentioned in the previous videos, you know, you all expect that I might get something wrong or I'm still learning or I might need help in this. So, you know, if you've got any information about it, I don't know or I need to be aware of, put it in the comments as normal. So, um, yeah, first I'm going to go over what I'm doing. So this is probably a next year project that Bravo Team is doing. Uh, it's, I'm one of the few people that have actually near completed the kit. So I figured I'd do a video of it. Um, this isn't obviously going to be as good as the last video that I did because Bravo 5 did that video. And he's quite good with computer editing and he has high tech cameras and lighting and he's really good with that kind of stuff. So he lives a long, long way from where we live. So we live in the north of England, he lives in the south, which is quite a long way away. So I've got to stick to doing the videos I can do with my own lighting, my own cameras, my own editing. I'm not really overly good at that. I'm primarily just a rifleman and team leader of Bravo team. That's main, my main roles for this, so I'm just doing what I can with the cameras that I've got. I have no one down here that's good at this kind of stuff that can help me. That's why my quality is not, you know, overly brilliant. But I do what I can, and I get a lot of support from people asking in videos to do more videos or reach out something else, or if I could build a kit, or if I have their various things. That's why I keep doing these videos, otherwise, you know, I probably would have stopped a while ago. So, um, simply for that fact, I will talk about the kit that I've gone. So this is a mid-war impression, 66, 67. We might play around with this depending on what kind of guns we've got because we have quite a few guns we can use for this kit, but it's a bit uh, farby for the type of era, so it depends what kit, what weapons we're using, such as like the M16, M203, which, you know, didn't come into service until the earliest 67 that we know about. So, you know, it's a bit, a bit of wiggle room, but because it's um, airsoft, we can get away with a bit more than we can at a living history event. So, for this example, weapon-wise, I have simply just gone with a standard M16A1. Uh, nothing overly special about this, it's simply just an M16A1, obviously. Um, originally, Mike Force were Green Berets. They were, you know, airborne trained, infantry trained, and special forces trained, and then there was put in, you know, uh, four to six-man teams, uh, which essentially would then get air airlifted into a certain area or a certain district of Vietnam. And there was a force multiplier, so basically they dropped these four to six American Green Berets into a certain area and they were supposed to acquire 80 to 120 men, which was uh, often Montagnards. They did uh, supposedly have Nongs, South Vietnamese and even Cambodians in some cases, probably a few other countries that were mercenaries. As I know, up to 2000 British ex-army was in Vietnam hiring themselves out as a mercenaries to the American government. So, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that's something also that, you know, that Mike Boss could have been a part of. Um, so that's essentially what they did. So all of them was Green Beret trained, so they had the same kind of access to weapons as most SF units. The M16 just being the most common one, just simply because I don't use this type of weapon very frequently. I have a lot of um, varied collections, you know, that's why I do a lot of SF units, just because I like to have a variety of weapons, change things out. So I could have used the M16, M203, Car 15, M2, M29, you know, whatever. Um, so for this example, I've just chosen the M16. Obviously you can get away with an AK and AK-47 chest rig, you know, several other type of weapons but this example I've chosen the standard M16 so yeah this is what I've gone for this um, so the standard kit um, we've gone with tiger stripe for this kit uh, we do have different types of kits uh, we've used a lot of hurdle in most of our kits uh, most of it's been hurdle so we're trying to just get away from just using the sole hurdle kit we have greens we have um, you know the jeans for the seals uh, and then we've got two types of tigers well at least I've got two types of tiger kit so we figured we'll go with, you know, mid-war tiger kit. As you know, hurdles were more common seen late war, so we thought we'd do mid-war in tigers. So I'm not too sure which version of tigers this is, because there is actually a book out there that tells you about 20 different types of tigers, and a lot of them were tailor-made by, you know, local Vietnamese shops. Uh, I know there's the, the Arvin advisor style, there's that golden tiger pan, the sparse, the sparse tadpole, and there's two different versions of that, the light version and the dark version. I believe these ones are just your standard tigers. Um, they're not the dark one and they're not the light one. I think like an in-between version. So as far as I'm aware, I think these are just tiger pattern. I think the other pattern I've got is tiger sparse, which I will use for my lerp kit, which will be a next year event also. So the tiger thing is still ongoing. So that's essentially what kit I'm using here. I suppose it could vary uh, for lerps. I don't know that they, the uh, Mike Force, sorry, that they use specific types of tigers. 
But this one, I assume, would have been the common one, as I know the dark sparse one was favorited by Lerps. I read that somewhere, so that's why I've stuck to that one for that and this one for this, as I got this kit quite cheap off a former member. Um, so that's basically what this kit is. So on my back, I have a PRC25. Um, I'll just use this as an example. I'm not the RTO. Um, Bravo 4, Ollie is uh, the, uh, no, sorry, Bravo 3 is the RTO. He's the main guy for that. But just for example, I thought I'd put the uh, SRT PRC25 on my back just to show myself up a bit more, buff up my kit. I'll probably use a um, Arvan Ruck or if I've got it all built and sorted, then a tropical rucksack. So that's more than likely what I'll be using. Just for the example, I figured I'd just put this on my back just to buff my kit out. Hopefully it uh, sells the wow factor. So um, yeah, that's what I've put on my back for that. Uh, hat. Don't know whether I'll go with a hat because I'm not a big hat guy. Um, I've just used basically a Tiger Boonie. One, because my hair needs cutting with it being getting quite long for me. And uh, two, just for the factor of what kit I'm using. So I'll probably go with a bandana as I always do. A uh, makeshift bandana. It's something I've done with most of my kits. I'm not a big hat guy, but for the example of the film, um, I've used the hat. I do own one. I, do, I own several hats for different things. I just never tend to use them. I end up taking them off, shoving them in a bag, and then using the bandana. I sweat a lot, so the bandana seems, you know, more iconic for me, more practical. Um, so, yeah, so that's that. So, um, holsters I've got on here is a shoulder holster. Now, obviously, I can use a hip holster, but because of the current weapon I'm going to talk about in a minute. For this, I've decided to go with a shoulder holster. This currently has a um, quite shiny Colt Series 70 in it. This is a, and actually one of my favourite guns. I don't use it very much because I spend a lot of time polishing it and looking at it. But uh, because at the moment I'm going through a storage issue of packing and sorting everything out my 1911s are currently somewhere down there and all that kit so this is the first easy access one I've got so at the moment I've put uh, this in just an example so this is basically World War II leather shoulder holster uh, in black because obviously we don't do brown after like 66, 67 black holsters become standard for Vietnam so I've used that for that uh, the next thing is the webbing which is the I believe it's the 1936 or 1937 BIR belt again I I'm a bit hazy with this because I don't use this one very often. It's something I got in a trade from Bravo 2 a long time ago. I've never actually used it, but for this kit, I figured I might use uh, change it up from the M56 to this type of belt. So again, I think this is the BAR 1936-37 uh, belt. Again, I could be a bit wrong about that. I'm not that familiar with this kind of belt. Um, so that's basically what I've used. It's pretty basic. You've got your um, six magazine pouches. I've got two water bottle pouches down here and then a early World War II type pouch just as a drop bag to put the magazines in. Now these are said to take three to four M16 kind of magazines depending on how you put them in. I have done a bit of a um, mod on this where I've put it in soap powder, I've put the mag uh, washing up powder you know, in warm water, I've put the magazines in and I've left them in for a couple of days to stretch the material out so they will take four or five even. I can't quite remember, it's been a while since I've done this but that's what these take, this, uh, the, uh, the 20 round short magazines. I do use uh, of the 30 round magazines, I take two, three, even four with me, depending on what kind of unit I'm using. Obviously for this type of belt, I can't do that. So I'll take this belt off, just sort of break down the kit. Um, so yeah, this is basically what I've done for the BAR belt. It's nothing in it at the moment, so it's really light, it's, it's you know easy to move, you take off, whatever. Um, there's no water, no ammunition, but it's basically a basic function belt. You've got your ammunition and your water. Obviously it's not going to house anything such as food, gas, batteries. You know whatever else you might be taking with you which you know hence the uh the lightweight rook or the arvin rook or whatever it is you're carrying or even the prc 25 as i've got uh, an m56 book pack on that um so yeah that's basically that uh, the next thing basically the last thing is the scarf um now the information i've tried to find on this is a bit scarce i figured there'd be some kind of backstory or some reason why they're using you know a scarf which is basically the french colors you know red white blue so i figured there might have been a reason for this I can't find anything about it other than the fact that it was basically to do distinctify certain type of Mike Force units operating in certain areas of Vietnam. Uh, there were several different versions of this depending on what kind of Mike Force it was and where what region there was in. This basically just pointed out to what unit they were. They, I did talk this in originally and I found out that's not the idea. The idea was to have it out and on display so it can be seen from far distance. People know that they're Mike Force and what detachment they are or whatever. I'm not understanding whether it's company led platoon size section size i'm still learning the information i know about this is you know quite limited as it's an ongoing thing it's not something they're going to use for next year until next year sorry so i'm still learning i've got plenty of time to catch up on it but from what i've googled and what i found out so far this is you know an iconic um mic force kit so this is what i built it on this was originally built from a french flag uh, but i've re-sewn it as i'm 
kind of handy with a sewing needle after all the years of sewing all the team's kit and then the stuff that I used to sew when I was in the army itself years ago. Uh, so that's what I've done with that. So um, as far as I'm aware of, yeah, this was just to signify what kind of unit it was uh, from a distance, you know, of the Mike Force. Apparently they was broken into uh, other, it's known, you know, Mike Force is obviously known Green, you know, Green Berets, Special Forces. It was also known as A teams and B teams as well, um, depending on what district and what area there was in, that was another common name they had for them. Uh, and they obviously operated within different parts of Vietnam, so you know that's what it is. It's either an A team or a B team Vietnam era Mike Force kit. I'm still learning, so I don't know specifically what I am at this point. If you know the spot, obviously I've gathered there's a lot of people that are more history knowledgeable than I am on these channels because uh, I do get a lot of comments t explaining things or whatever, and I really appreciate that. I mean, I do get a couple of assholes on here that just come on slagging us off and ranting and bitching. This, this isn't for them, as I've explained in many videos, we're still learning, we're airsoft enthusiasts that do Vietnam, we solely specialise in Vietnam, we keep learning and adapting over years as our team keeps getting better and our kit keeps getting better along with our knowledge. Um, so yeah, if you do know something I don't know and you want to educate me in the videos, then you know I'm more than happy to uh, read the comments and learn from this, or if you recommend books, documentaries, whatever, I'm also you know, keen to learn from that as well, just so I get the kit more accurate and I understand more of what I'm doing. So yeah, uh, this is pretty much the entire kit. Uh, obviously I haven't gone over jungle boots because they're a standard for pretty much every video I do other than maybe, you know, your Arvony seals if you're using the Converse shoes or, you know, whatever it is you're using. But jungle boots obviously is a good standard for, you know, this type of kit. Most US kits use, you know, standard jungle boots. I'm not going to go over them because I've done that many times in other videos. Uh, headgear, again, you could use a varied of things. I've gone with a hat, I'll probably use, you know, the you know, the bandana thing that I normally make for my kit. Uh, scarf, gone over, uniform, tigers. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I've gone over. Uh, knives, you can use like standard bayonet. Probably use typical SOG knives as well. I've got one of them, I take one of them going around K-Bar. I don't think that would necessarily make much difference with knives. That's if you carry a knife within your kit. I do with some of mine. Um, Sidearms, again, varies the same thing as SOG. Anything that SOG or Green Berets in Vietnam would have had access to, I can assume you would have access to. 1911 being my favourite gun, and I own about seven 1911s, so I always go with that. So that's your sidearm covered. Uh, t shirts, you could go without one. I've got a vest one at the moment because it's quite warm here, so I've been wearing a vest most of the day. Uh, green t shirts, you know, vests, I don't, it normally doesn't matter because I'm more than likely not going to see it because of the shirt and the neck chief and everything else, so uh, that's pretty much that. Gloves. I suppose you could wear black leather gloves, or you know, the uh, the pilot's gloves. Again, it's quite warm. I don't often wear gloves either, you know, even though I probably should. The amount of calluses and marks in my hands, I probably should use gloves. But I don't because it's just something that I'm not comfortable with. This kit is specifically tailored to me. The rest of the Bravo team may do their own ways. Most of the kits that we do, everyone's got their own unique thing that they do. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my kit. So again, this is uh, Bravo 1 with Bravo Team Airsoft on the Mike Force kit mid-Vietnam. So thanks for watching.